Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to the bonus session for Impressions Connect e-commerce for embroiderers. Uh, this is something that you doesn't have to go with the rest. You could get enough from the rest of the sessions, but I thought this recording would be great for you to learn a little bit about a couple case studies I've worked on, something that I've shared uh, in educating multiple groups about e-commerce. So it's something you may have heard from me before, but I think these case studies are important enough to kind of show you some real world reasons that I use sites and how I use them. The first one is a real estate store. Uh, without naming names in this particular channel, uh, I was involved with building and running the top provider for apparel for a major real estate company, uh, national and international, went to international eventually. And in partnership, we did this in partnership with the primary brand. It had some great advantages here. Working with the primary brand, working with the company directly to make a company store that was branded just for them, an individual website just for their people, meant that we had seam seamless integration with the IP. We had the ability to use their graphics and not only their graphics, but their color schemes and trade dress. They let us use a lot of that when we were building it. And so we were also licensed to reproduce images and produce new images. So we could use their logos as you would expect, but we also had the license to produce new images, new garments and apparel based on their branding. So that really gave us a lot of chances to do some very retail styled, uh, some very different kinds of exp expressions of their brand than we might otherwise have done. Certainly we had to run it through people, we had to talk to legal, we had to talk to marketing, but we had the ability to do these things and to create items that weren't just the uniforming items. Um, this was done with maintained stock. So this is something where we had pre-decorated stock and we had event sales. So we actually were, as being part of this group, we had to attend events. We had to attend trade show events that were specific to them, but those were also events at which we could sell direct product. This meant we actually had some increased ability to sell and the stock that we kept throughout the year, it was stock that we were also using to fulfill on online sites. And this is one of the one of the websites that I actually ran for a time and uh, turned over to other people when I left, but it's something that is still running now uh, and really was a pretty impressive site and made quite a bit of money. Uh, the thing is, this was primarily direct to the customer which meant we had a couple of things that were great. More retail styled pricing. There was a uh, sharing, there was revenue sharing that went back to the company, of course, and there was licensure fees. So we did definitely have to pay the company for this. And like I said, we had to attend a certain number of trade shows for them and appear as vendors. So there was definitely money involved in it. We This is not a, something we just got for free. Depends on the kind of clientele you're working for, you know, the kind of company you're working for, what will happen with that. But this was something where we had to pay to play. However, it allowed us to have much more retail styled pricing. So we were getting markups that were pretty decent. I mean, these were retail styled, not wholesale. It was not like a normal custom order, but because we had some online design, because of what we were doing with them, we also had the ability to do custom orders and we were sort of blessed as a custom order resource as well. So what you have to think about with company stores is not just the fact that the company store allows you to sell that company store product, but that the company store product may open the door for your conventional embroidery business. So think about this. As you are doing custom orders, you may have people ask, hey, can you add my logo? Especially when you're talking about real estate, you may have the overarching company and then a DBA or a different kind of company attached to it. Uh, and I've actually done more than one of these real estate stores. You will have the opportunity to do custom work. And as you do custom work for them, despite the fact they may not be in your region, you will open yourself up to more custom work from them as it goes. So it also provides a marketing vehicle. So this is something that's interesting. Uh, national brand tons of different offices, fair amount of throughput. And these are pretty good cases for an online company store. They had money, they had throughput, they had uh, the ability to do some fairly high-end garments. They were allowing us to use their IP. Yes, we had some other investments that went into it, but overall it was uh, quite lucrative. And I think that what made it work out also, um, the mix between the live event sales, which definitely now is less of an issue certainly, that allowed us to kind of have a stock that we used for multiple channels. Uh, one of the other things to think about if you're doing a lot of company stores is to have certain color sets and certain garments that you decorate for all the stores. And that these color sets, um, we will have special colors that are for each brand, but we have a couple of neutral colors that we use that are in the same, uh, same brand so we keep blank stock and decorate just in time as orders come in. So there are multiple ways you can handle this. Pre-decorated was how we handled most of this, but we also have the option of doing multiple company stores where we have some staple items that are common to the company stores in neutral colors that we may be able to decorate just in time. 
So it's something to think about when you're talking about company stores, who makes a good client for a company store. I always say distributed workforce is great or multiple locations nationally is great. Uh, and certainly where you get some lock in because you get the branding done and you put together a website that really kind of is blessed by the parent corporation that helps as well. So these things can help with them doing the marketing or at least appreciating you as a preferred vendor, which is what we had here. Um, other case study that I'm going to bring up, only going to do two of these because it's a quick bonus video. Uh, this case study was a medical group, a hospital group that we did a piece for, and this was local. So this is local to my area. And we had uh, multiple hospitals within the area and we were doing uniforming and company stores. This meant uniforming both for uh, people who were actually on the floor, uh, you know, first line workers who are doing medicine and also, you know, orderlies, things like that, as well as nursing staff and some stuff for docs. Um, as well as company store stuff that was not directly for that. We had as well, all of the office staff, so office casual stuff, all of the accounting staff and the people who were working there also wearing garments that we were producing, as well as a company store that had uh, a little bit more fun or universal items that were emblazoned with the company logo and all had to do with the company group. So once again, this is in partnership with the primary brand. So we had seamless integration with the IP. We had a site that was more trustworthy because it looked like a site that belonged to them. They actually even allowed us to use graphics from their stuff. It depends on, once again, very highly depends on the client. We were specifically their one partner for this. It's not that people couldn't go get garments elsewhere, but we were their one blessed partner and we were even in the employee manual, that sort of thing. So we were certainly licensed to reproduce images and produce new images. We had event-based images as we did specifically for them that were also part of this. This one was a little different. It did have maintained stock, but this was done with a dead stock guarantee. And what I mean by this is in the agreement with these folks, if stock remained dead for a certain number of months, I believe in this case it was six months, uh, that stock was theirs to purchase. So if we had a bunch of returns, if we had issues, if they had us produce more stock for something, or if we just had produced too much stock um, that had gone beyond, I mean, within reason, had gone beyond what we were using to fulfill, that they had to pick that stock up if the purchase is entirely stopped. Uh, and if they decided to terminate the contract with us and no longer work with us, the remaining stock that was on our shelves was theirs to purchase. And that was part of the agreement of working with them and providing all the fulfillment services we did. This is another time where our fulfillment and our purchasing services, the things that the website enabled, made the difference in selling them on us as the servicer. So here's the thing. Once again, with in-house uniforming, this is how we handled this to make it work for everybody. Number one, distribution through inter-office mail. They had an inter-office mail system and a multi-site mail system. So we would do a delivery ourselves to their main hub. They would do all of the final distribution and enter office mail. This was not without problems. There are problems with lost packages that you have to deal with that are through inter office mail or things that are left. We worked on that and certainly there were, there were difficulties there. So it's not something that doesn't come with difficulties, but it was interesting to do a partnership between how things were delivered and packaged. The second thing, and this is probably the primary thing, was a voucher program. Because we had the ability to run coupons and vouchers, we provided them with vouchers that they prepaid for for employees to get their initial kit. Initial kit and yearly updated kit was done through voucher programs. So they would give us a number of vouchers that they were going to use. We would pre-approve these vouchers for the website. And at the end of the billing period, we would give them the voucher number we had involved. And like I said, because we had the dead stock guarantee and we had some upfront money with them, we were not as concerned about this stuff, but we would bill for all the vouchers at the end of a month and the monthly voucher program would then uh, pay out to us. And once again, these prices were not like necessarily the wholesale prices. I would say we were doing a little bit better than that. Uh, margins were a little bit better because of all the programs that were involved. And, but the other thing was in between these things, they were getting one yearly full update where they were getting a new, uh, a particular amount that I think differed depending on who was running a, a, the particular uh, program. They were getting an amount every year and they were getting an amount for their initial kit on hire. But in between there, we were totally able and allowed to do direct sales. Cool thing about that meant the direct sales, yes, there were percentages involved as, as they usually are. We're dealing with this kind of IP. We were selling directly full cost to the 
and employees. So if the employee wanted to buy their gear through us or buy other kind of fun company store items that we were allowed to produce, uh, we could make that money back with them. We could actually uh, sell to them between those periods or those yearly updates. So yes, we had the guaranteed amount that came in monthly through all of the purchases, through all of the hires, and through all of the um, people going through their cycle to their next set of gear, their yearly re-up. That was kind of a guaranteed stream. And then we had the ability to sell to them, to entice them, to market to them, and get direct sales for items that were outside of that area. The only thing we have to realize with this is it did mean we had to talk to marketing a lot, we had to talk to corporate a lot to make sure that the garments we had made sense and that some garments were specifically said that this is not for the floor or this is for the floor or it can be worn by this group or not this group. So we did have a site structure that was made to help people get the garments that were right for their position. So this had to be done in close relationship with the medical group. In this way, you can see the website had purpose. What are the purposes it had? It had the purposes of making it, uh, making really a whole program for the vouchers so that it was easy for distribution and for ordering and that the hospital group no longer had to handle anything except for the last mile of distribution through their mail system. It also had the purpose of helping employees figure out which garments they were allowed to wear because that was part of our descriptions and our writing, part of our copy and part of our, our organization. So it's also part of the browsing. We talked about how browsing is going to show things. That was part of it too. We enabled them to get the information they need so they knew how to uniform themselves properly. And so there are two big purposes right there. And the third thing for us is it gave us an angle to direct sale of that branded gear specifically to those people outside of all the guaranteed sales that were built into this churn. And once again, here's a group that is the local uh, distributed workforce or in multiple locations. They have a lot of churn. People were coming in, you know, on and off of that workforce quite a lot. And that meant we were constantly re-upping, getting lots of new hires and voucher program stuff. And people very usually would need something more than they were getting from their voucher. And when they needed that and they were then on the hook for their own gear or they wanted to have more than their voucher would provide for, um, then those things were able to, we were able to sell to them and only deliver a percentage and actually make a decent margin on it. So these are two use cases that are interesting. These are both direct company stores that were specific to a brand. But the things that you might not think about when you're thinking about company stores, even when you think about individually branded stores, it's pretty frequent that people chalk them up entirely to a brand or a retail style brand or a team or something like that. And they don't think more about it or they think about a generic store for their company that is all the decoration you can do and it's generic and just has your entire catalog up and allows them to make whatever they want. But these are focused stores that have a purpose unto themselves and that provide additional utility, ease of use to the people on the end user side. So it's something to think about and something that I'd like you to consider when you think about e-commerce. Uh, think about the purpose and remember who it is who's buying from you and what you can do to make their lives better. Uh, thank you for attending the bonus, uh, the bonus session and uh, thank you for attending Impressions Connect.